Hello everyone, my name is Nicol Sayanada, and today I'll be presenting Grapevine, an anonymous proximity-based gossip messaging mobile application. I worked on this project with Paul Grand, and this is our final presentation. So Grapevine is a mobile application that transmits messages to nearby devices that are also running Grapevine. The devices exchange data using Bluetooth Low Energy. The motivation of our team is we're both really excited about networks and exploring alternative links other than Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Additionally, we both have a lot of web development experience and wanted to reach out of our comfort zone and work on a mobile application. The technical approach involves the mobile application being written in TypeScript using the React Native framework, which allows us to have cross-platform flexibility. Additionally, we used a number of Bluetooth modules to do the Bluetooth Low Energy programming. Additionally, we're using Firestore, which is a cloud NoSQL database, as our remote storage option. And finally, for anonymous authentication, we're using Firebase authentication. So for our project plan, our scope for the semester was to release v0 and v1 of our application and what that means is we wanted to have an application that would successfully transmit messages from device to device and be able to do that with an on anonymous approach so we were successfully able to do that and complete all of our tasking and user stories for v0 and v1 as you can see um, the done column on the right is completely full of all those issues. Now we are continued and excited to continue working on the project starting with version 2 which again as I mentioned it was out of scope for this semester but we're continuing on for the future. So we have, you know, you can see how we lay this out throughout the semester. We would have a backlog of issues. We'd then prioritize what was most important to do next and then finally mark what we're currently doing. So the first thing we really link here for literature sources is a wiki that was written as part of the Bluetooth framework that we used on the mobile application and the core idea here was that uh, when the devices connect they do some sort of negotiation to say this is the maximum transmission unit or total data size that I will accept and then um, there's different behaviors both on iOS and Android. So after that initial connection, they'll try to up the size so that we can get as much data throughput as possible. The next piece of literature we have is a dissertation about an attendance tracking application using Bluetooth Low Energy. This was really helpful as it explained a lot of the basics of Bluetooth Low Energy, but it also you know, gave some creative approaches to actually transmitting data using advertising packets versus having to connect and actually transmit information. The next thing was a best practices sort of blog um, article that we found, and this was talking all about Bluetooth scanning, specifically on iOS. So this talked about active scanning, passive scanning, background mode scanning, which was super helpful to see, you know, what that behavior looked like, so that we weren't, you know, encountering random issues, um, and it helped us debug some of our uh, more advanced scanning techniques that we were trying to accomplish. The next thing we found was a uh, article that was talking about you know, Bluetooth MTU, which we talked about in our first source, and this was another one that, you know, gave a good overview of how advertising works in Bluetooth and how you can actually change that uh, data window so that you can, you know, get more throughput. Um, and this, is, again, was just more good context to learn um, as we were working with Bluetooth. And finally, we have the Getting Started with Bluetooth Low Energy, which is actually a textbook um, sort of book that was super helpful, again, for learning all about um, gate and Bluetooth and services and characteristics which you know we later implemented in our application. So the way we actually laid out our application and architected it was the highest idea was this React Native application which was written in TypeScript. However, with the framework we could actually port this to native code on both Android and iOS. So everything that's contained in this React Native application is actually cross-platform. So the first big element is the UI. Um, this describes you know, what the users see, how data is rendered. Then we have the business logic which controls how the mobile application functions. Um, and the biggest piece here is the business logic ties in the two core modules of the application. The first being the Bluetooth module, which has the implementations for both iOS and Android, where we actually interface with the native uh, Bluetooth frameworks on iOS being core Bluetooth, on Android being Android Bluetooth. Um, and then on storage module, uh, we have several different modes, one being local, which actually uses async storage, which will essentially 
store all the data on the device itself. And then the second storage mode is remote, which is our Firebase Fire Store, our NoSQL document store. Um, so as you can see, our business logic you know, pulls these in together, um, make sure they keep themselves abstract so we're not you know, intertwangling any sort of logic. And then that you know, makes a nice interface with the UI. So this is how our application is organized and architected. So next we're gonna actually break down that Bluetooth module from the app architecture slide. So with Bluetooth Low Energy, there are two main roles, the peripheral and the central. A peripheral will advertise data and a central will scan for that data. So a peripheral, uh, the data that they can advertise is arbitrary or it can be actual services that contain characteristics that ultimately can involve an attribute that can be written to or read from. So the way we enable two-way Bluetooth communication is Grapevine's Bluetooth module actually implements both the peripheral and the central roles. So here you can see device A and device B that are both running Grapevine, and here's a zoomed-in view of the Bluetooth module that's running on both of those devices. So device A's peripheral will register the Grapevine service. It'll then advertise to uh, devices nearby that say, hey, I am running Grapevine. Devices B central will now be scanning for those packets. It'll see, oh great, you're a Grapevine device. It'll grab some information from that advertising packet and messages will be transmitted. So you can see both, both devices are running both the peripheral and the central and that's how we're able to actually enable two-way Bluetooth communication so the devices can read each other's messages and do full peer-to-peer uh, -peer transmission. So now that we've covered the Bluetooth module, now we're going to go more into the storage module and talk how we have our data organized. So as mentioned before, we are using a NoSQL document-based store, meaning we essentially have these objects that don't necessarily have tight relationships um, in a traditional SQL sense. So the first thing we have is a message, and the message contains things like content, which is the actual you know, message body, uh, the user ID, uh, a transmission, Boolean um, and several timestamps along with numbers to track how many times the message has been either transmitted or how many total devices it's on. Uh, next we have an advertisement and an advertisement will have the user ID that um, was advertising that data packet. Uh, the MTU which is the maximum transmission unit uh, as we mentioned earlier. The RSSI which is an interference value that can be actually correlated with distance between two devices. And then some more timestamps as long as some more uh, Bluetooth related information. And finally, we have watermarks, which are two numbers that represent the timestamps of the last message that a user has seen from an advertising user. So we'll go ahead and get more into these document uh, models next, but this is the key data models that Grapevine has to actually store messages um, and advertisements and then actually implement that transmission logic. With NoSQL, the actual document paths are how we can create value for queryability and access patterns. So we store messages in two different ways. Uh, there's a big messages collection that then every user ID will then have two children collections, authored and received, and then every single message data object that we talked about in the last slide is actually stored by either the created at timestamp or the received at timestamp. So the reason we're actually saving these messages by timestamp is because Firestore um, uses ordering by default to store their keys. So when we do queries, we can say, give me all of user one's authored messages, and we'll actually receive those, those messages um, in order based on the created at timestamp. Uh, additionally, the same is for received based on you know when those messages were received by that user and this enables us to do some really powerful access patterns that um, allow us to do our transmission logic. Additionally, um, moving on to advertisements, we store advertisements by user by the advertising user um, and then we store again using that received at timestamp so they are stored in order and we can actually pull them out um, of the database natively in order. Uh, and so this allows us to then say, okay, well, get for, I'm user one, give me all of the times I've seen user two, for ex instance. And then we can you know, do logic or show how many peer interactions those users have had. And then finally we have watermarks. And so what watermarks are, are essentially, um, I'm user one and I, I see what user two, I wanna be able to say, I'm user one, I've seen user two, what's the last authored and received message that I've seen? 
And as mentioned before, we can then retrieve the messages of the advertising user, both authored and received, by those timestamps in order, so that we can say, okay, I've seen this message, and then now I would like to retrieve um, this most recent message. And then we can go and retrieve just that window of messages that the user has not seen, that the advertising user has, and then we can update that watermark to reflect the transmission of those messages. So the Grapevine UI is pretty simple. Uh, the home screen shows all the messages that you have received from other devices. And so you can see we have three messages here. And the, the first message and the third message uh, just weren't good enough. We didn't want to continue transmitting those messages to other devices, so we didn't like them. However, that middle message we hit like. So now I have basically said that when I see other Grapevine users, this message should be con um, transmitted to those users. So with Grapevine, you're actually in, in control of what messages are spreading around this, this network. Now, the second screen is your profile. This is where you can see the messages that you've actually written. And you'll see a little toggle next to all those messages. And that uh, essentially says, you know, do I still want to be transmitting these messages to, to devices I pass? It's similar to the heart um, on the home screen. Um, additionally, we do have um, the actual data logic to track how many total devices messages have um, been moved to, but uh, you know right now they're not being reflected in the UI. And then finally, uh, the profile screen, you can see peer interactions. You can see what devices you've been encountered, um, how many transmissions you've had, um, and this is really nice for debugging to be able to say, you know, are we actually picking each other up um, from a Bluetooth link stands point. All right, so this is the home screen of Grapevine. I've received two messages, and you know, I, I thought lunch was bad today, so I'm not gonna like that, but I do agree that Mullen should have been fired, so I'm gonna go ahead and indicate that I like that, and what that'll do is if a new Grapevine user comes into distance, I'll actually transmit that message. So now we'll go ahead and see we have a new Grapevine user, um, and you should see that this message actually will get transmitted to them, and there it is right there. So you see the lunch message was not transmitted because I did not indicate that, that I wanted that. Now what we'll do is on this other message, we'll go ahead and write, it is gloomy, because it's pretty bad today outside. We'll submit that, and then you should now see that I will actually receive that message. Um, and then the, for the user that writes a message, you can see the messages from your profile. You can actually use this toggle to basically say, I no longer want to transmit a message. And you can see this user has now received It's Gloomy. Of the problems we faced had to do with Bluetooth. The first being the BLE MTU. And essentially that is a restriction on the total amount of uh, data bytes that can be transmitted between two devices that are connected. So to get around this, we actually went through a connectionless scheme. So instead of actually transmitting all the messages between devices over a Bluetooth link, instead we just transmitted the user ID of these two devices and then did all the logic to actually transmit the messages um, behind the scenes, not over Bluetooth link. Next, the advertising data packet is constrained to 31 bytes, which gave us trouble with this second implementation. So as we were talking about above, instead of actually you know, sending all the data over, we're just sending this user ID, and we're actually able to do this connectionless by adding that user ID to the advertising packet. However, the UUID that our authentication provider Firebase uses is really long and would exceed this limit. So essentially, the advertising packets would get a corrupted, shorter UUID. So to solve this, what we ended up doing is implementing short monotomic user IDs, and we manage that through transactions. So essentially, there's a sequence in the database that says this is you know, the next user ID that can be claimed. And then every time we get a new user from Firebase, we'll then map that long UUID to this short monotomic user ID. And we use transactions to make sure that um, the increment, incrementing of this um, sequence and the assigning of these monotomic user IDs is consistent. And then finally, um, the big challenge that we faced was now that we're not actually transmitting messages device to device, you know, how do we do this logic to say, okay, I just saw this device or this user, excuse me, um, how do we say, okay, give me all their messages. So what we came up with were the watermarks that we mentioned in the data models above. So essentially, for each user, we're storing what message timestamps they last saw for every other user that they've encountered. So essentially, if I've seen user 2, then I will be able to say, I've seen user 2's message at this timestamp. So next time I see them, I can know I saw this message timestamp, so give me all the messages after this and um, you know before 
the most recent timestamp. And then after that message is transmitted to our device, then we can go ahead and update that watermark to say I've read up to this message.